Well, we're here with the man who made history at the inaugural Greenbrier Classic, the 2010 champion, Stuart Appleby, the new Mr. 59 in golf, the winner by one in a most magnificent, breathtaking way, Stuart. Thanks, man. Thank Congratulations. You. I don't even know where to begin, really, when you add it all up. There's so many different things that you accomplished here today, but 59 and the win, yeah. it's a storybook stuff. I mean, how does it sink in with you? Um, you know, I started the day, I mean, thinking I've, I've got to go low, I had a look, I am a few off the lead, you know they're going to make a move, uh, who's they, how many of them, uh, would it be just one? Um, I got off to a great start, six under at the turn, I thought, well, to be honest, where's that put me, where would I need to be, come 18, end of 18, really need to be another six, so that gets me at 12, obviously that puts me in the 50s, well, I felt like well, if that's what I've got to do, that's what I've got to do. You know, it sounds simple, it isn't, but it just sort of felt very comfortable today. Just the most comfortable I've been um, for a long time. And yeah, just out of all the rounds, this one by far, I just felt the most relaxed and okay with things. You looked absolutely sure of yourself. Stone-faced is how we described it on the air. You know, you didn't let go of your emotions. You were so focused. Even when you made the putt, yeah. you knew Jeff Overton was still out there. Yeah. But yesterday you had played with DA Points, who made a run at 59. Yes. And you know, you got to witness that. Uh, did any of that kind of affect you at all? Um, well, I had I played with Steve, Steve Stricker at uh, the John Deere uh, a few weeks back, and watched him miss two putts in two days. And that that they were putts you consider a chance. And I just watched the putting display. DA points yesterday, absolutely lit it up, uh, made everything. Um, was I thinking I could do that? I thought, well, I'd like to do that, <laughs> and who wouldn't? You'd everyone would put their hands up for that. But I'd, I think it started with um, my attitude just being really tr relaxed and trying not to get ahead of myself. Um, I felt like I had a bit of dose of that yesterday. I felt a little bit more confident in what I was doing. As, as being my 11th week on the road, I was certainly fatigued. So I, I tried to step away from any anxiety and today I just was the most um, confident and comfortable that I've been and I felt like I knew I was going to make that one on the last. I thought I knew this was 59, you don't get a chance to do this very often, you have to make this putt. Um, but that didn't bother me saying those things and you know it worked out good. And you really dead center at 16, 17 and at 18 mm. and you know the putt at 18 mm. when, when it dropped and the reality set in. What did you think? Um, it's still a number, I guess. Uh, I don't, it is a unique number. Not many people have done that. Um, you know, 11 under is by far my lowest round of golf ever, even in a social round. I think probably eight under is my lowest. Um, I, you know, just I got on the good side of things. I got good cards. And uh, I just felt like that I was going to scare the hole. And when you have those days, you usually make way more than you miss. And, and you might go, well, why don't you do that more often? That is one of the conundrums of the game. Sam Snead shot the first 59 in the history of the game in the Spring mm. Festival here. It was not a PGA Tour sanctioned event, but it was written about in Sports Illustrated. Yes. He got a telegram from Queen Elizabeth congratulating him on this remarkable feat. Yes. And now here yes. on the same property, it was on a neighboring course here, the Greenbrier course, not the old yep. white course. But to have your name linked a little mm. bit for the come full circle, mm. Sam Snead to Stuart Appleby to win the first Greenbrier Classic. That's pretty heady stuff. I saw his card, it's in the locker room, and uh, I, I looked at a lot of the memorabilia in here and, and the place is uh, absolutely littered with history. And Sam Sneed, what, a, what a, a legend of the game, what a magnificent swinger of the club. Did you ever meet him? No, I uh, saw him hit, ball. yes, my wife did. Um, he wasn't sprightly, but I tell you, he got off a chair very quickly to meet my <laughs> wife, very sprightly, get up. I uh, watched him hit balls at Augusta once and just silky smooth. I uh, just only wish that I could have been uh, around 25 years plus earlier to see a guy like that play. But I saw his card there, I saw the score and thought, how do you shoot 59? That's with probably one ball, yeah. uh, old clubs, a shorter course, but mind you, I think uh, 59 back then is equivalent to probably 56 today. Um, that's phenomenal. You've worked hard for this moment, Stuart. You know, you're a champion golfer, you've had a tremendous career, you've flirted with major titles, mm -hmm. and yet you also, you know, you said you played 11 straight weeks. You came here to try to help promote the event, to launch the event. Mm -hmm. Mm. which was you know, good service on your part. Did you come back and win it? Yeah, it was interesting. I got a call only a handful of weeks ago uh, to come out and do a media day. And, uh, you know, I was pretty much had nothing to do that day. That's no problem. I heard a lot of great things about the Greenbrier, the facility, the place, the history, a couple of hundred years plus. Yeah, why not? And I uh, took my family out, lounged by the pool, um, 
lucky enough where Mr Justice let us have all we can eat for a couple of hours by the pool. I was doing the media. Uh, little did I know that it would lead to uh, a win here. Um, an amazing place. I didn't get to see the facilities as much. A casino opened. Um, you know, there was no gambling on my part, but uh, playing golf is a gamble. And I, certainly seeing what I had to do to beat Jeff, I had to sort of, I guess, throw the chips out and, and see if I could get something in front of him. Well, lastly, this was an important week for the Greenbrier, mm -hmm. for Jim Justice, yeah. for the great citizens of the state of West Virginia who were so proud to have this event on a national stage. Yeah. What do you say to the folks about this first event? Well, they did a fantastic job. Uh, when I was doing the media, Jim was, was talking about the time, the money, the effort, the manpower, the volunteer power to, to go into pulling this off. And it was huge in a pretty short time period. Um, I'd never been up here before apart from the media day. It was all very new to me, a bit uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed about how this was going to come together and, and they did it. Um, knowing this 200 plus years of history of this, this vicinity for Sulphur Springs, uh, phenomenal. I think Australia's history is barely pushing anything like that. To think that people came here that long ago and, and, and today he's revitalising that, that motive to, to come out bring your family. Um, everything's, everything's laid on and, and you know, they hit a home run for sure. You hit a home run too. Just the fifth 59 in the history of the PGA Tour. Only the second time the world got to watch it live and only the second time a 59 was shot on Sunday mm -hmm. to win. It's a lot of great achievements Thanks. right there. I appreciate and you're a great it. champion. Stuart Appleby, the winner of the 2010 Greenbrier Classic.